Hi there. In this section, we're going to go over parts and assembly. As we begin, you want to place your case on the floor. There are a couple of reasons for this. One, it frees up your hands. It's much more easy to handle a case that's on the floor rather than on your lap. And then if for some reason the trumpet does happen to fall, it's much closer to the ground. It doesn't get quite as damaged. Now we want to make sure that we're opening the case properly. There are a few things you can look for that will help you identify if the case is in the upright position. One are the latches. This case here has latches. If you pull up on the latches, most likely the case is in the proper position to open correctly. Now, as I open this lid, you'll see it just stays in here and it doesn't fall out. Nothing's wiggling or moving. It keeps the instrument nice and safe. If you have a case with a zipper on it, the zipper is usually on the upper half. If it's right in the middle, just be very careful as you open it the first time. If it feels like anything's falling out of the instrument as you open it, peek in there a little bit, you might wanna flip the case over. But again, as you open the case, everything should be seated firmly in, in the case. The pockets in here are designed for the instrument and it should fit very snugly in there. Now we're gonna zoom in a little bit while I go over the parts of the instrument so that you can see it a little bit better. All right, let's talk a little bit about the parts of the instrument. As we go along and learn our hand positions and how to play the instrument, I will be referring to some of these parts of the instrument. It'll be helpful for you to understand what they are. If I speak too fast, you can always come back and watch this video again. There's also a diagram just below this video that labels all of the parts as well, and you can reference those at any time. We're gonna get started here at the, the where the mouthpiece goes in. This is the lead pipe that goes along here. As we follow it along, there's a hook right here. This is actually called the finger hook or the pinky hook. Your pinky will go in that later on. If I continue along around here, we have our first water key. There's another one down here. These are just valves to let some of the condensation out as you're playing, you'll collect water in here. You have hot air and a cold instrument that creates that condensation in there. As we follow along, it connects into the valves up here. Now, these three buttons right here are called our valves. First valve, second valve, and third valve. The first valve is the one that's closest to your body when you play, closest to the mouthpiece. Second is in the middle, and third is furthest from you. Now these valves have pistons that are inside here, and these are called the casings. These are the cases for those piston valves that go up and down. So as I push this button, there's actually a piston that's rotating inside of there. It's really important that you protect the casings here and make sure these don't get dented. The tiniest dent in this can prevent that piston from freely moving up and down and make it near impossible to play and can be very, very frustrating. So be extra careful to not let anything damage those casings. Now attached to the first piston casing is our slide right here. This is the first slide, also referred to as the, the trigger slide. And then there's a thumb rest right here that your thumb is going to go in later. Here's our second slide right here. And then we have our third slide over here. And you'll notice each of those slides are connected to the valve one, two, or three that they represent. This one here actually has numbers on each of those valves as well, valve casings as well. Now on the third slide, we also have this ring right here. That's called the third valve ring or the third trigger. And depending on the size of your hand, you'll have your ring finger or your ring finger and your pinky inside of that. And this actually will slide and move. And we'll talk more about that later. So those are all the, the main parts that you really need to know as we're going along. There are a few other parts listed in the diagram below if you wanna check those out. But the main parts we're going to be talking about for hand position are the casings and then our thumb hooks and rings as we go along. And then you wanna be able to reference the valves one, two, and three. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we put the mouthpiece in now. Now, I've moved the camera up a little bit higher so that you can see me put the mouthpiece in here. This is our lead pipe. When you put the mouthpiece in, you really shouldn't be pushing. We're just setting it over the top and gravity is pulling it in. You can see I just let go of it and it fell right in there. If you have to push it in, something's not lining up properly, you need to take it into the shop and have it fixed. Uh, once the mouthpiece is in there, you're going to take this and rotate it a tiny bit. That's it. 
you see how little I moved that? I'm gonna do that one more time so you can see it again. Slide the mouthpiece in and twist the tiniest bit. Now your mouthpiece is another part of the trumpet that you really want to protect. You wanna keep your hands off of it as much as possible. Make sure you're not bumping things with it. You wanna keep germs off of it, but you also wanna make sure that it doesn't get bumped because a mouthpiece can get stuck. A little tiny bump from the side can jam it in here and then you can't get the mouthpiece out no matter how hard you pull. And your teacher will need to use a mouthpiece puller. If your teacher's unable to do that, then you'll have to take it to the music store and have professionals pull it out for you. So just be really careful. Make sure you don't drop it or bump it in anything. Now one last thing I'm going to show you here to be careful of is this. When you hit the top of the trumpet, it makes a cool popping noise, which is pretty fun. However, as you're doing that, you're actually hammering that mouthpiece into the lead pipe. And again, it can get stuck and then your teacher needs to use a mouthpiece puller or you might have to take it to the music shop. So be careful with that mouthpiece as you go along. When it's time to take it back apart, just give it a little twist and it should, should come out pretty easily. And that's the mouthpiece. We are now done with the parts and assembly video. You know how to place the case on the floor, how to open it properly, identify parts of the trumpet and how to put your mouthpiece in properly. The items that we discussed to help protect are listed below and there's also that diagram that I talked about before that labels all of the parts of the trumpet for you to review. Please scroll down and look at all of those items just to make sure you caught everything before you move on, but you are ready to move on to the next section. You can go on up to the getting started tab and scroll down to making noise. It's time to take the mouthpiece out and start buzzing. Good luck.